I, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, hereby formally tender my resignation as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. Robert Mugabe's 37-year rule defied the odds, and at 93 years old, he was the world's oldest ruler. Mugabe started as a celebrated leader of Zimbabwe's liberation movement, but came to rule with an iron fist. Why do you want to say this? Well, don't you grow it, but you good of us <laughs> to feel I'm still there. To stay in power, he deployed tactics long used by dictators. In the early 1980s, Mugabe sent the military to crush a resistance movement. Over 10,000 people were killed, including many civilians. And in 2008, security forces and Mugabe loyalists attacked, intimidated, or killed opposition supporters, forcing the opposition leader to quit the race. Mugabe went on to win the second round of the vote, but international pressure pushed him into a power-sharing government. In 2014, longtime Mugabe loyalist Joyce Majuru was pushed out of his inner circle after Mugabe's wife accused her of plotting a coup. Majuru's husband, who was also part of Zimbabwe's political royalty, had died a few years earlier in a mysterious fire that she says was an assassination by forces loyal to the president. Earlier this year, Mugabe fired his vice president, Emerson Menengagwa, clearing the way for Mrs. Mugabe to succeed him as president. In the early 2000s, Mugabe supported the seizure of white-owned farms in an effort to increase his popularity. Later, he said that the government could take farmland without paying compensation. And if anyone ever wants to protest in Zimbabwe, Mugabe has even raised the price of cellular data to prevent online organizing. But now that his long reign is ending, the big question is whether Menengagwa, his likely successor with a checkered human rights record of his own, will embrace democratic rule or resort to the same kind of despotism as Mugabe did.